colleagues, good morning. I'd like to welcome all the participants in this workout session. Today is a good day to congratulate all of you with the new year. I'd like to wish you every success in your endeavors. Well, you never know. Maybe what you're going to do would stem from the Gaidar Forum. A lot of issues have already been raised here. I'd like to remind you that uh, 2018 saw the 25th anniversary since the adoption of the 1993 Constitution of the Russian Federation. There were lots of four uh, different uh, workshops where this issue has been discussed, but I'd like to tell you that as I was preparing for this round table, I looked uh, through different materials. I assessed the different uh, topics uh, that we discussed, and uh, I should say that the topic of constitution and the problem of the constitutional law has been the centerpiece of uh, the Russian Federation, not just uh, because uh, this last year was the jubilee year since the adoption of the constitution and that's uh, quite uh, understandable the constitution attracts our attention people refer to the constitution they cite the constitution lawyers do this uh, academics uh, do this uh, this also happens uh, due to other reasons for example the role and uh, the meaning of the Constitution, how to make the provisions of the Constitution relative in today's life, issues related to legal values, the choice of national <coughs> strategies. But uh, right now, we're also considering new processes uh, through the Constitution, like uh, digitalization, for example. Maybe uh, there should be the mentioning of digital rights mentioned in the Constitution. Well, to what extent uh, digitalization can affect our life? Uh, that's also an important question. That means that the role of the Constitution in Russia is very significant. We can also talk about the role of the Constitution in the legal doctrine, where the Constitution is not just uh, the subject uh, of study but also an instrument uh, of learning well the criteria of truth that is why we're very grateful to the organizers for letting us have this discussion the name of this workshop is quite uh, obvious there is uh, the question in the title of this workshop was there an alternative we make a flashback to history because without history it's impossible to evaluate what has already happened to assess uh, the positive things that we've had we've had to assess uh, the negative uh, things that we've had and also to look into the future and this will set the tone of our discussion the questions on the agenda are very well known to you and going back to the historical aspects of the constitution i'd like to say that and I'd like to remind you once again I'm not speaking as the director of the Institute not as a representative of the Russian Academy of Sciences yesterday the presidium session we touched upon the issues related to the Constitution and education the Constitution is a working document a hundred academics uh, discussed uh, this particular subject and these were people from different fields so as a member of the European Commission democracy through the law and uh, I should say that uh, this Commission gave uh, the appraisal of the Russian Constitution because it corresponds to all democratic standards it is based on international constitutional legacy and uh, what is valuable is that it was stated that in the Constitution the human rights 
uh, not just uh, the dogma, but the guidelines for action. I remember some time ago there was uh, the person who spoke about the new constitution in Armenia. They decided to divide uh, the human rights into those uh, which should be the governmental program and uh, mostly social and economic rights were written into the Armenian constitution. Well, that was a step back to some extent, but that's uh, a new approach. And of course, uh, the Russian constitution is different from the Armenian one. And uh, also, the members of the commission pointed out that one of the achievements uh, is uh, the supremacy of the international law, over the Russian laws, well, also the Constitution stipulates uh, the role of the Constitutional Court. Well, on December 7, 2018, there was the 8th International Congress of Legal Experts, and our institute uh, conducted this Congress together with the Council of Europe and uh, the Venice Commission of uh, the Council of Europe. And by the way, one of the main presenters said that it was not then when the Constitution was appraised by us highly, but even now the Constitution corresponds uh, to that assessment, to that high assessment. It's worth uh, saying it. Also on December 19, 2018, when there was uh, the special reception devoted to the Constitution. The Russian president said that the Russian Constitution is not uh, a dogma, it's uh, the working document. The Constitution prevents uh, its uh, potential. Our first speaker will make a presentation on this issue. I know that there are a lot uh, of people here who would like to speak. We have eight uh, main speakers. And then there will be a discussion, and after this preamble, I'd like to give the floor to the first representative, the representative of the Russian president in the Constitutional Court, Mr. Mikhail Krotov. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. Well, well, this title uh, of the round table is a bit provocative, but I would like to say that the main task that we had to solve way back in 1993 is to stabilize the society, to achieve some kind of balance. And the role of the Constitution that uh, we identified uh, and uh, the role it is playing now are two different questions because 25 years have already passed. Of course, uh, the Constitution cannot be written overnight. It was a serious document, and uh, we had a lot of experts involved uh, in the drafting of the Constitution. Well, there were some nuances that we had to take into account, but nevertheless, uh, we managed to come up uh, with quite a good document, and it allows us to solve a lot of questions nowadays. Well, if we look at for example, the position of the Constitutional Court. Well, we can say that the first period was when the Soviet legislation was harmonized uh, with the provisions of the new constitution of the Russian Federation. These were the first questions considered by the Constitutional Court because it quite it was quite obvious that uh, the Russian legislation when the Soviet Union collapsed uh, was not uh, in line with the Russian constitution. Then on the basis of the constitution, the constitutional court uh, started to achieve uh, the balance between the rights that uh, had existed before and uh, what uh, is stipulated by the new legislation, by the new constitution. A shining example is the law number, law number 122, when the government uh, made a step forward and uh, the constitutional court uh, had to clarify some aspects uh, because uh, there was the major task to guarantee the rights of people. If we look at uh, the actions of the Constitutional Court today, we can see that they are dealing with in-depth questions when they analyze uh, specific uh, legal uh, problems within the framework of the existing legislation. As an example, I can cite uh, 
uh, an order on administrative responsibility when one and uh, the same violation can uh, basically violate uh, the license and uh, the constitutional rights of consumers. So where are the legal boundaries? Well, and uh, of course, uh, that was uh, the subject of the analysis conducted by the Constitutional Court. In fact, uh, right now, the Constitution has a lot of potential. The Constitution has a uh, a lot of potential for solving future problems and uh, for stabilizing uh, our society. In fact, I should say that after the adoption of the Constitution, we haven't uh, seen any significant changes in the legislation that could affect uh, human rights and freedoms. If we look at the competency of state organizations, we can see that uh, uh, the uh, legislation is quite stable. There haven't uh, been significant changes as far as uh, human rights are concerned. Uh, some nuances may appear from time to time, but uh, they fully correspond to the Constitution. And the discussion th that sometimes we have about uh, the legal aspects, like the Constitution should contain all the exact uh, provisions, uh, well, in fact, uh, I don't think it should be like this. Uh, the Constitution identifies the boundaries and the balance uh, can tip this or that way. And this balance depends not on, well, let's put it this way, uh, the uh, measures taken by legislati legislators on their own will, but it depends on whether society is ready for this or that changes. If we look at uh, how the Constitution corresponds to the international law, well, you can say that uh, the foreign policy of the Russian Federation over the last 25 years has been based on the Constitution of the Russian Federation. The Constitution of the Russian Federation defines uh, foreign policy policy of the Russian Federation on the international arena. The question of priorities of the norms of the international law over the Russian laws. And uh, it is uh, written into the Constitution, well, was not something new for the international community. The same situation is in Germany. The German courts uh, considered such issues, the priority of international law over German laws. The English Constitutional Court also dealt with this issue. And when we encountered a similar situation in Russia, it became quite clear that, uh, of course, uh, well, uh, these issues should not be above uh, the Constitution of the Russian Federation. Uh, international laws should not be above the uh, Constitution of the Russian Federation because otherwise we'll lose our sovereignty. The Constitutional Court gave an answer to this question and this answer was quite clear. Well, as far as this issue is concerned, I always ask myself, what do we mean by the international law? Because right now, we can see that there is some kind of erosion of the understanding of the international law. The so-called uh, soft law, different uh, directives, uh, doctrines, uh, uh, just uh, considerations, uh, and so on and so forth. As an example, I can cite uh, the Stukaturov case where the Constitutional Court said that in our legislation we must uh, have some kind of uh, grading of uh, people who can be uh, considered uh, as um, legally disabled and the European doctrine envisages uh, four degrees of this breakdown. Well, uh, First of all, I should say that in Europe uh, there are no such a doctrine. Second, how can this be implemented? In reality, the question was raised, but it hasn't uh, been responded to, and uh, the legislators even worsened uh, the situation. While in the past, the uh, people were legally disabled uh, when uh, uh, we couldn't do anything else for them. Right now, well, uh, we can say that we can consider a person who is... Uh, subjected to disability in the future and some deals can be disputed because of the person uh, does not have a clear understanding of what he is doing and this can be done before the court hearing. Well, maybe we should have assessed uh, uh, the uh, institution that uh, 
we have to protect such people because maybe, again, this wasn't valued by specialists properly. The Constitutional Court, in fact, uh, said that the institution of disability is uh, the highest uh, form of property protection for such individuals because the civil legislation has uh, nothing else but this. In fact, uh, these people can uh, have uh, the property protection because since they do not understand uh, the actions uh, they do and uh, hence uh, the legislation will protect uh, their property. But again, please look at this situation. Often legislators use this institute not the way it is uh, should it should be done by the civil law. Like for example, disabled people can not uh, vote uh, in the elections. It is quite uh, clear if the person cannot uh, strike uh, civil deals, obviously this person cannot uh, uh, elect uh, people for public office. But whether it is correct or not, uh, maybe we should talk about other factors, about other criteria that we could use here. But nevertheless, uh, that's what the situation is. Well. Sorry, I was carried away because uh, this topic is uh, very wide. Well, let me just emphasize one more question. The activities of the Constitutional Court open up new uh, perspectives uh, for the live constitution. I don't like uh, the term live constitution. It's not because it is not live, but Americans usually use uh, this term, but uh, in a slightly different format. Our constitution is acting, and uh, we have a lot of potential for the future. The activities of the constitutional court uh, contribute to the creation of the legal mechanism that uh, can have an impact on both legislators and uh, the citizens. And uh, obviously, this uh, will allow us to celebrate more jubilees of our Constitution. It has uh, an important potential, and it doesn't need any changes, drastic or non-drastic. So, and uh, our constitution is 25 years old. It is older than the age of many European constitutions. Thank you, Mikhail Valentinich. It's um, clear that there are many people who share your views and favorable attitude towards constitution. I must agree that the term living constitution was m multiplied, but in fact, it's all about different legal concept, about di different legal family when they use different approach to the constitution and the reproduction of constitutions, Repro constitution of the first generation. That's why there's necessity to have such a theory that is being realized by the judicial bodies as well as in American system. I think that the next person will tell us something. I know that our colleague Mr. Ravshan Ranimaglis Mayulov, and I'd like to add, as for the international law, something that is used freely, some norms of international law, I must not refer to Valery Dmitrich, who said that prestige of international law is falling for the reason. And there are examples when it's been used in the interest of uh, certain countries or large regions. How much, how normal it is when we assess novel situation, modern situation. We should say that the activity of Russian constitutional court is in situation when the interpretation happens in relation to the European Convention, not the text of convention, but interpretation of the convention by different international organizations. Uh, Interpretation of the international organization is not equal to the convention. Is that true, Valentin Mikhailovich? The topic is very interesting. Thank you very much. Colleagues, it's clear that the problem of functioning of constitution and the outlook has to do with the reproduction, the content, according to the modern conditions. 
It uh, merges with the judicial system, I think, that Rafshan Ismailov will tell us. Thank you very much for invitation to participate in very interesting function. I'd like to say that constitutional judicial system can be a system of alternative transformation or development of constitution through the constitutional interpretation. In my understanding, constitutional development should be understood if this is a situation when constitutional court gives new interpretation of the norms of law that oftentimes is different from the understanding from the application of law. Such opportunity of the legal doctrine was accepted long time ago. It's uh, interesting to refer to Yelling, who worked in the last century. But uh, this is about creation of the constitutional bodies after the Second World War. What is interesting, such opportunity is being confirmed by the Venice Commission in 2010, adopted change to the Constitution. So these are constitutional changes. An important part of this presentation, this report, relates to the problem of transformation of Constitution. Terminology can be different, but Venetian uses formal and informal change. In principle, I agree that more adequate term for our legal system and our legal system is term development or transformation. But the essence doesn't change, as it seems to me, because at the end of the day, there is legitimacy of such activity because of the immutability of the text of the Constitution. The text is being developed by the new content. Venetian Commission, along with many interesting ideas, there are interesting points. It points out that between the formal change of Constitution, where we understand change of Constitution in terms of the procedure, and the judicial change, judicial interpretation, there is reverse proportional. How this Constitution, more probability that the subjects will come to the Constitutional Court. Then we can make two assumptions, some indirect. First, constitutional changes, no matter what is the form, is inevitable. The alternative to the change of constitution in the form of formal procedure in terms of the change through participation of political powers or through referendum or the change through the judicial interpretation is factual revision, review. The other interesting resume, interesting to say that judicial interpretation is closer to our system. It has alternative and compensating nature. At the end of the day, hardness of constitution forces the subject to apply to the constitutional court. The practice of different countries shows that hardness is the category quite complex, it includes not only procedural points provided by the Constitution itself, but psychological elements. The thing is that society may have attitude that is negative towards Constitution. In Japan, interesting, the Constitution is quite old, more than 70 years old, but it never changed in terms of the procedure, mostly through judicial interpretation. There were attempts, if I'm correct, to think about changing ninth article, the right of the state for war. The other factor, the model of constitution for a particular country, diffuse model, absence of single constitutional court and presence of several su superior courts, such as in Greece. It enables fragmentation and impossibility to form uniform practice for constitutional interpretation because they rarely come to the judicial bodies. Important to notice the potential of the interpretation as the form of transformation of constitution expressed in the question about human rights. I think it has to do with abstractness of the norms and increased 
accessibility of the change for most of the subjects. First of all, for legal entities and individuals. It is confirmed by the Venetian Convention. Larger scale change having to do with the fundamentals of constitution is, is pre preferable. I think this balance should be observed. Thank you, Ravshan. I want to say that in such a topic that was discussed for a long time about constitutional judicial, after the adoption of constitution, people discovered so many faucets. There is opportunity to understand the position of different scientists who present different scientific schools in the field of Venetian Constitu uh, Conference. And Ms. Ismailov is one of the active participants. It confirms that we discuss the same questions. Nothing unique is there because Russian constitution is part of modern picture of the constitutional world. But talking about constitutional ju justice, it's not coincidence. And the, the clauses that determine the status of the constitutional court, implication of constitutional control, it happened due to ideas of the public figures and scientists. Some of them are here. I remember the discussions that took place and possibly the most difficult discussion is the about federal content, division of the powers between the floors of the power house and relation between vertical and administrative bodies and the federal cross-section and constitutional justice. We have good traditional doctrine in official and scientific, and I think that Sergei Mikhailovich, you understand who I talk about. Shakrai, by the way, preparing for this conference, I found interesting statement by Churchill. The history will confirm my rightness, if, especially if I write the history myself. Because of Brexit, it's quite relevant to remember Churchill. Thank you, Natalia. Dear colleagues, I always feel a little confused when we discuss alternative story discussion of alternatives, if decision is not made, if the history does not realize, but the Constitution works for 25 years, what do we discuss? There were al projects of alternative constitutions. It's known to everyone. Were there different models of organization of our country, of our state, about economics, about power system? Why do we go to the past trying to look for alternatives? Is it true that we're looking for arguments to support the idea of the expediency to act all, to update the Constitution? If you have doubts regarding efficiency of Constitution against the backdrop of political and economical realities. For me, formula of efficiency of Constitution seems strange because for realization of Constitution we need mechanisms. If some clause of constitution doesn't work, is not incarnated into the laws, it's the question to the legislators, not to the text of constitution. What does it mean, the efficiency of constitution? From the standpoint of modern science, efficiency of the constitution is ability of constitution to change social reality according to plan embedded into constitution and move the situation in established direction, even if political consensus, consent is not strong. The Constitution of 1993 contains a description of functional model of state and society. The values and ideas about desirable future and the goals of public development. Constitution is nothing else but cultural and historical matrix in the form of the law is the essence that provides picture and balance of interests of political forces of principle of 
administration, political constitutions, specifics of economic uh, arrangement. As I said many times, we don't need to invent a national idea, we don't need to write it into constitution, because national idea is laid out in the form of constitution, and our constitution stably work for a quarter of the century, speaks about its efficiency. So maybe question about alternatives, that is the title of our discussion, it means something else. Maybe we have public need in some other state organization, the other model of federalism, different economics, different social order, different model of authority administration. So the constitution should not prevent from birth of new things. So let's not talk about norms, but specific boundaries and new models. Let's discuss the contour of desirable future. And if we discover that needs for change of social order exist, let's think how we can legitimize this requ request. As to my personal position, but because time is limited, I will give you several bullet points. Any constitutional technology of dual intent, it can create not only legitimacy of authority, but if it can bury legitimacy of the power. Historical example is events of 1992-93, when in year and a half constitution had more than 400 amendments. The fundamental law became patchwork. At the end, the power fell, that lost legitimacy in the eyes of society. We had dual power and political chaos with some episodes of civil war. So the implication, if there is an article about damage of the flag, if there is criminal liability, we need to introduce special article about disrespect of constitution that is more dangerous than the jokes of the teenagers on the internet. Second question about alternative to the constitution should be raised when the facts say that we have constitutional crisis, when efficiency of the constitution became so high that the gap between the text and real life cannot be remediated by the instruments of the constitution itself. As I said earlier, constitution of 1993 was the first wide-scale attempt to create new social order. It was an attempt to make soci society and administrative authority to come to a new quality level. It was reality and society. The Constitution of 93 was more than realistic. During all period of formation of a new state of Russia, legal constitution, I'd like to emphasize, created material constitution, but sooner or later we start to balance to what is stated in the constitution to create parallel, practically mirror organizations that realize power. We have public chamber and the state Duma. We have government in President's administration in one place, power and uh, authority. The society feels duality, Irre so there's desire to change something. But because we don't know how to change reality, we have desire to change co correct constitution. If we decide that constitution is dead, we need to have reliable facts, such as that existence of constitution does not correspond to life. But the facts say that the constitution has enough recipes and instruments to correct the situation. First of all, about the instruments, such as adoption of constitutional laws, about president's administration, about federal assembly, to make amendment to constitutional law on government and constitutional court. It's about how to maintain authority. In order to start immediate treatment, we need to have diagnose, diagnosis. But in fact, it's not constitutional crisis. 
the threat is the legitimacy of power we can bring to reality using instruments of constitution. Third, should we discuss constitutional alternatives to create fundamental assembly, we should not do it, although the science of this assembly walks around Russia for 100 years. That was in February Revolution time, in November Revolution, when they spoke about constitution, but there was a grand piano in the bushes. Likely, the mechanism of public referendum was selected, and at the end of the public voting, the funk acting constitution was adopted. So the authorities used experience of the October Revolution in order to have legitimacy based on the publicly accepted constitution. New parliament was selected and then all powers. This approach allows to give legitimacy to new power and new system of organization of uh, power. Colleagues can ob object when we talk about legitimacy of the Constitution. In the early 90s, from the left and right flank, people spoke that the Constitution was not quite correct. The opponents made summary that President's authority is illegitimate. However, this position does not correspond to the reality not in terms of the fact, not from the standpoint of the legal doctrine, but our political critics understand. I introduced the dual legitimacy of power. First is national voting, second voluntary participation in parliament election and president. So summary, if you, your party, decided to participate according to established by your own rules, you de facto and de jure accept the constitution and established order. In such a way, modern Russian power received legitimacy through the usage of mechanism of national voting according to the new constitution and multiple common elections. By the way, one analogy to such construction and legitimacy of power and constitutional order, restoration, we should look at Tatarstan. You should refer to Tatarstan while I'm present. It's a positive example. Fifth, the experience shows that legal fixation of results of public creativity, sorry, time, is possible without intervention into the basic text of the Constitution. I come to your quotation. For example, as for local self-rule in different regions, we can use the proportionate representation of citizens of different nationalities. For that level, there is no direct uh, elective rule, and uh, there might be the representation of professional communities or at the level of local self-rule, only those people who pay taxes obediently will be able to vote. The existing constitution does not have any obstacles for forming the government of parliamentary majority, and this was mentioned by President Putin in his State of the Union address, and this may be a solution to the problem of 2014. We must also remember that for the first time in our history, the concept of constitution includes uh, seven elements, including the federal constitutional law and the decisions of the constitutional court. All these acts are elements of the existing constitution, so they can be published together with the text of the main law. In this case, uh, we can see how we can balance, how we can maintain the balance of stability and novelty in the constitutional legislation. Thus, we have a superstructure in our legal system becomes updated. It is quite possible to do this on the basis of modern Internet technologies, as it was uh, mentioned before. 
So we're talking about the digital version of the Constitution on the basis of the knowledge base. Finally, number seven, right now we should start working on the digital constitution. These words are still in parentheses. Maybe we should think about uh, the digital constitutional meeting. And I'd like to say that it's better to have a non-ideal constitution than an ideal revolution. The alternative to the Constitution is the revolution. I'd like to finish with this quote. And I'd like to say that there haven't yet been an ideal Constitution anywhere. Of course, sir, we can talk about uh, the new legal matrix, but I'd like to say that the Russian Constitution actually established uh, the new kind of Russian society. And uh, I should say that the discussion we're having right now is very useful as for reviewing the constitution and there are people who call for this and there were different reasons mentioned by sergey mikhailovich but i think that one of the reasons is that we have some kind of legal romanticism in the system of state management Many people say that only when we change the Constitution we can solve many legal problems. And people in Russia think like that as well. But not just in Russia, look at the situation in Africa. In our institute, we translated many African constitutions into Russian. In Tunisia, they adopted several constitutions. Usually they do it like uh, two or three years. Every two or three years they have a new constitution as well as in many other African countries. But nothing changed in Tunisia. So this is a very expensive process to change the constitution. And uh, when you do it all too often, well, you can uh, basically diminish uh, the legal system. So right now we cannot even adopt uh, those uh, constitutional laws which are envisaged by the Constitution, not to mention changing the Constitution per se. Well, and we can have a long discussion on this issue. Well, there is uh, the issue of constitutional and legal practice. Why uh, the Constitutional Court uh, does not interpret the provisions of the Constitution anymore. Well, because at the original stage, after the Constitution was adopted, the Constitutional Court uh, made nine decisions regarding the interpretation of the Constitution. The same hip happened in Bulgaria, and I translated these uh, texts myself. Uh, we were in search of new laws, uh, but now everything is more or less uh, stable. Well, there is no need to interpret the provisions of the Constitution anymore. We uh, came across uh, other resources, well, less uh, expensive, more flexible, well, and uh, there is the regime of of legal uh, savings, so to say, when we don't need uh, too many uh, legal changes. And uh, thank you for being a provocateur here when you raised uh, this question. And uh, I agree that uh, the 1993 Constitution led to the creation of the new Russian statehood. The next uh, speaker will be speaking on this issue. He is not just a passive observer of this process. Grigory Vasilevich is uh, the deputy is uh, the uh, chair of the Department of the Constitutional Law of Belarus uh, State University. He was uh, the Prosecutor General of Belarus, and uh, well, he was also a member of the Constitutional Court, and uh, he has uh, the view on the Constitution from both sides, and not just in Belarus. Thank you very much. And uh, I should say that for three and a half years, I was involved in the preparation of the 
text of the Constitution of the Republic of Belarus, and I was a deputy chair of the working group on the development of the Belarus Constitution, and of course uh, I studied the experience of the Russian Federation. We came to Moscow many times. Uh, we saw what uh, had been achieved. Uh, we also studied the texts of the constitutions of other Soviet republics. It was in 1990, 1991, first when the Soviet Union was still in existence. Then uh, the countries became independent. We also studied the constitution of the Baltic states. Uh, that uh, got independence and uh, the Russian constitution was adopted in 1993. We studied the Russian constitution as well. Was there an alternative? Well, I think uh, that the alternative uh, probably existed as far as uh, the provisions of the constitutions are concerned. Uh, but as for the constitution per se, there was no alternative to, to the constitution per se. There was a need to change the political system, the economic system, and uh, the social system. And uh, of course, in principle, the Russian constitution corresponds uh, to uh, European constitutions, uh, well, uh, that means Russia has made the European choice, uh, although things are not quite ideal over the last uh, several years. As for drafts of constitution of the constitution, there were several drafts, uh, but uh, recently I uh, familiarized uh, with the Saratov uh, draft, although many years uh, already passed uh, since. Uh, it was uh, presented. Some ideas uh, turned out to be interesting. It's not important uh, what the text uh, of the Constitution says, but what uh, is important is uh, how the provisions of the Constitution are implemented in practice. And uh, my colleagues have already mentioned uh, this, how the text of the Constitution is being interpreted. Are there any barriers? in uh, the text of the Constitution which uh, stop uh, the progressive development of the country. I think uh, that the Russian Constitution does not have such limitations. Even, for example, when you look at uh, the article of the Constitution that uh, says uh, that there should not be state ideology, but nevertheless, uh, when some political force comes to power, it has some program. Well, it has uh, some political provisions uh, and ideas regarding how this is, how society should develop. In 1996 in Belarus, there were drastic changes in the text of the Constitution. Often when I speak before my students, I often say about uh, how scientific ideas can be implemented and uh, what uh, consequences they might bear if you do not pay attention to these changes. Uh, when you are a parliamentarian or a politician, in 1996, uh, the president of Belarus uh, introduced uh, a two-page draft law suggesting changes in the formation of the Constitutional Court. In 1994, the Constitutional Court uh, was formed by the Parliament. The president uh, suggested uh, we form the Constitutional Court on parity, 50% by the parliament, 50% of the members will be suggested by the president. The parliament uh, agreed with the president. The parliament uh, did not discuss uh, this issue at all, did not argue against, and uh, as a result of it, since uh, the parliament had this kind of direction, the president suggested more drastic changes to the constitution, which led to the strengthening of the presidential powers, and in fact, uh, the weakening of the parliamentary power. Well, I'm not going to touch upon this in detail, but it seems to me that there is a need to change the constitution only when there is a need uh, of drastic changes. For example, when the country moves from the presidential system to the uh, parliamentarian system. Well, we can speak about Moldova, where they have the parliamentary republic, but there is no real power. Uh, 
of the president or vice versa. So everything depends on how the constitutional norms and principles will be implemented. The second thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that those people who deal with constitutional issues often say that uh, the spirit of the Constitution can solve this problem. No, it's not like this. The more you deal with these issues, and I've been dealing with those issues for several decades, well, the more I see that uh, we are just uh, blowing smoke. People say, we'll just uh, write this into the Constitution and life will improve. No, it's not like this in most cases. Well, of course, uh, I can uh, just express uh, my ideas. Well, I can express my wishes. Well, we can even write uh, some of these ideas into the Constitution, but if they're not implemented, well, it will be just uh, wishful thinking. Well, of course, uh, the Constitution can be changed only at uh, critical junctures, and I think uh, that uh, right now we should focus on real life. Well, of course, uh, uh, when you are in Minsk, and uh, once I remember I was watching Russian TV in Minsk, I was watching the news, and uh, I realized uh, that both in Belarus and in Russia, we must uh, focus on the efficacy of uh, the uh, executive power, not uh, in terms of just the scientific aspects, uh, but in practical terms, how to make uh, the executive power more effective from top to bottom, how to use human resources more effectively at different levels, at the top level, at the middle level, at the bottom, and of course, uh, well, here we still have some problems here, and it's a painful issue because uh, the responsibility of people in uh, the executive power uh, should uh, be clearly stated, uh, they should be responsible for their effective work. And I think that those uh, processes, those aspects which were mentioned by Russian experts, such things as uh, constitutionalization of the legislation, they should be translated into life. And there are scientific works uh, written on that, but uh, naturally the framers of the Constitution must uh, come up uh, with uh, specific ideas uh, that can be written into the Constitution. Maybe uh, the recommendations uh, on how to implement the constitutional principles and norms in daily practice. It seems to me that this area of research, such as implementing constitutional norms and practices, is of paramount importance. I believe that the Constitutional Court and other uh, bodies of the Russian Federation, uh, researchers and experts, uh, have uh, managed uh, to make this Constitution life. Well, and uh, as for the interpretation of the Constitution, it takes a place uh, bringing to bear uh, the new situation, the new uh, world order. We can say the same thing about uh, the U.S. Constitution or the Constitution of other countries, but, well, as you can see here in Russia, constitutional norms are functioning, but potentially there is still a lot of work to do. I hope uh, that uh, 25 years of this constitution is not the last uh, jubilee. There will be more jubilees in the future, and it is important to focus on the discussion of the text of the Constitution, what can be changed, what can be amended. For example, uh, I suggest uh, we write into the Belarus Constitution that uh, our country is a digital 
uh, state, well, maybe it's a very strange word combination, but, well, it's not a live thing. What is meant by the digital state? Well, maybe just it's uh, one of the goals uh, that we should uh, achieve. And on this note, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Once again, I'd like uh, to say that since we've been citing your book, The Theory of Modern Constitution, it's uh, like a a Bible. I have it in my bag and I keep uh, rereading it and I hope that this theory that you mentioned in your book will be translated into life and this uh, will help uh, in the development of Russian society. Just one more remark. I looked at some of the amendments to the Russian Constitution. Well, my colleague from Azerbaijan and uh, me, well, uh, there are there is such a phrase, uh, changes to the amendments to the Constitution. And um, I should say that there are chapters that can be changed in the Constitution only by way of referendum. But when we are talking about adding something to the Constitution, I always say that if the essence of the chapter is not changed, but we just uh, can add something to uh, this uh, chapter, it can be done in the simplest way by the Parliament, not uh, by way of referendum. And uh, recently we adopted laws on making additions to the Constitution when there is no need to just uh, change the Constitution drastically. So the Constitution can be amended. There is some amendment. There is some potential here. Thank you very much. I'll just uh, give you my book, uh, The Experience of Constitutional Reforms in Modern World, how these reforms uh, happened, uh, well, what is the essence of specific amendments and additions, and of course uh, the constitutional reforms. And uh, everything depends on the constitutional model in a particular country, but I'd like to draw attention and thank you once again, Gregory, for your presentation. You said that with the adoption of the new model of the Russian statehood, uh, this process uh, was in uh, the situation of the struggle of ideas. And as Rafshan has already mentioned in his brief statement, the Venice Commission has mentioned this, uh, that the text of the Constitution should uh, not uh, depend uh, on uh, the political situation in the country or with the formation of the new parliamentary majority. So the answer is already here. And when you say that uh, the constitutional norm remains uh, stable, it's a philosophical premise. When dynamics is in the statics, the search for the optimal model. In Belarus and Russia, we have no contradiction. And, uh, well, as for reproach uh, in my address, regarding the constitutionalization of the legislation. No, we're not just talking about this. We're also talking about uh, uh, the implementation of the provisions of the Constitution. Well, there are no mechanisms. Well, that's true. We're here we're talking here about legal romanticism, uh, but uh, the process of implementation doesn't work properly. Together with Nikolai Nikolaevich, uh, we suggest uh, we do constitutional monitoring, and our institute is very famous uh, for this, and uh, there was a time when uh, we dealt uh, with all these issues. Uh, Mr. Vingarov uh, was involved in the process of legal monitoring. This uh, technique uh, is uh, being used in practice, but uh, they can just uh, look through 10 laws per year. But if we uh, introduce uh, the effective system of constitutional monitoring, and if it becomes a part of the public management system, this will be one of the factors that could improve the efficacy of the legislative power. Well, uh, the uh, executive power. So we suggest uh, we use this mechanism. We should move from theory to practice. I agree with you. All science is becoming applied. And that means it is in demand. Uh, we can only pride ourselves on that. Well, I admire your institute. I admire you, your ideas, and uh, your proposals uh, were considered uh, 
from that particular angle and your institute is the leader in the Russian Federation as far as this aspect is concerned. By the way, uh, the concept of uh, constitutionalization was written into the text of the first constitution of Armenia. And I should say that um, other experts and the members of the Venus Commission removed this provision from the Constitution. But I think, uh, well, nevertheless, uh, well, there is a need to write. In, well, when the new text uh, was uh, proposed, uh, this provision was deleted. Well, dear colleagues, the Constitution of the Russian Federation stipulates uh, the basic values of Russian society. Well, the Constitution is valuable in itself, but life goes on. There is no stopping it. There are public changes in society. New values are emerging. And what place, uh, the constitu what role the Constitution is going to play? What are the prospects uh, for the use of the Constitution? Well, Mr. Vladimir Pligin, from the State Duma of the Russian Federation will speak on this issue. Uh, he uh, uh, is uh, a member of the 4th, 5th, uh, and 6th uh, Duma. Vladimir Nikolaevich, uh, the floor is yours. Colleagues, uh, thank you very much. After such interesting presentations, well, usually uh, there is nothing to say, but nevertheless, I'd like to touch upon some other aspects. Sergei uh, mentioned uh, the possibility of an alternative, and of course, uh, he said that it's hard to talk about alternatives from the point of view of history. It's not easy to do. Let me just uh, cite one quote, which uh, uh, is the quote of Fernand de Brodel. Those uh, who wanted to rely on the uh, devourer's past uh, will uh, devour the future of the people. Well, I'm not going to characterize the situation of the past. I'm not going to evaluate the past, but this past devouring uh, the future of people uh, in a monotonous way has existed uh, here in our country, and of course uh, we should get rid of the past, uh, we should offer something new, and that was our historic task. How can we discard uh, the old system and come up with the new system and to find the way? And Sergei mentioned uh, this, how to legitimize uh, this uh, particular new thing. That's a difficult case. Well, if we assess uh, the Constitution in terms of uh, problems it is going to solve and uh, what values it contains, we must understand uh, that uh, the architecture of the modern order, and this was mentioned yesterday, the Gaidar Forum, this architecture uh, yields uh, new challenges so that we could solve them and uh, manage uh, political systems. And here I should say that technological changes uh, lead to the changes in work relations and we must understand uh, that in the near future from 20 to 80 percent of professions in different uh, countries uh, will become obsolete. Thus uh, there will be a rearrangement of technological changes leading to changes in the social order and labor relations. There will be changes in the system of uh, redistribution of wealth. We already have new challenges here, and uh, here I'd like to caution you. There are two trends which are quite visible. On the one hand, uh, the trend of globalization, which seemed uh, to be stopped, but uh, it's not like this. Globalization is gaining momentum, and that leads uh, to uh, uh, deleting the national boundaries. But at the same time, there is a process of uh, uh, sover uh, 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 attaining sovereignty, and this process will continue to gain momentum. So uh, this uh, process is uh, lead to the situation when political systems need new methods and uh, practices of management. In the past, uh, 
Many specialists in the field of political science emphasized uh, the fact uh, that the policy that uh, led to putting the bureaucratic machines in order uh, fell into, faded into the background. And uh, right now we have uh, new problems that our societies face, and that means we need to optimize managerial decisions. And I should say that this kind of stability is uh, leading to new processes. Right now, national states are first and foremost uh, states uh, which have institutions of stability. The goal is to prevent uh, or to stop uh, global uncontrollable processes. This goal is attainable only when national institutions have specific values which can lead to potential positive changes. Values become uh, the pivotal point. If we're talking about the constitution of the Russian Federation, we should say that uh, values are dominant nowadays or must be dominant. Currently, this is a triad of uh, values, justice, responsibility, and uh, trust. Of course, uh, there may be other values introduced, but nevertheless, uh, this uh, triad uh, is of great importance. By the way, the term justice uh, is mentioned in the preamble of the Constitution of the Russian Federation, and uh, by many experts, uh, it was assessed uh, as uh, the value which is above the Constitution, but in fact, it is the value uh, which is an integral part of the Constitution. It is not above the Constitution. Also, the Constitution allows us uh, to uh, follow these values. Uh, we conducted many polls, uh, we uh, discussed all these issues, and uh, the word justice uh, is a very contradictory term. It's a very difficult term for understanding. Justice is the value which reflects uh, the system of capabilities of any persons for self-fulfillment. It uh, reflects uh, the inevitability of justice and access to material and social capital and uh, social upward movement. As a result of such a study, we managed uh, to uh, give a new interpretation of the category of values, especially for young people ages uh, 20 to 35, and uh, of course uh, the constitution of the Russian Federation reflects uh, this uh, particular system of values. It contains uh, provisions uh, for every citizen for self-fulfillment uh, and uh, self-expression. And of course, uh, when uh, uh, there are different versions of the Constitution of the Russian Federation, not just the Serato version, but also other projects, other drafts uh, uh, that we had in the past, uh, three or four of them. And of course, as for human rights, uh, we could offer nothing more except uh, self-fulfillment uh, and uh, self-expression for any individual, as it is stated in Article 2 of the Russian Federation. There is no need to change it, but uh, there might be a need of some addition so that these rights could be an integral part uh, of uh, any citizen of the Russian Federation, but the implementation of these rights should be part and parcel. Yes, yeah, but mm -hmm. If I understand the values, let's take, for example, one simple example, very simple example. I unfortunately cannot make sure that it's in the minutes of this meeting. There is a right for the property, the property right. How normal representative, normal of normal law enforcement machine can prevent the violation of private property right? private case that takes place with private cottage 
and with the elements of the public property. Reaction can be different, believe me, please. And the Constitution establishes the value. It specifically put private property as number one in order to create impression and till this is not globally settles in the brains of people that something created by private sector but private property yesterday was used i will not reproduce it there was term guillotine of cutting of additional administrative requirements that's why mentally if we mentally cannot provide this approach this value approach the next point for the lawyers seems to me that the politologists initiated this trend of the fairness, transparency, and comfortable usage of the system, unlimited conversation, and the situation with academician Habriva, we had a chance to communicate in different seminars. We had different understanding of what is the transparency of the legal system. Does this law establishes the situation when the laws can be adopted, but the problem convenience of legal system can be discussed. Why? Because the wave of normative material, and this is, by the way, a very simple form of reaction to the challenges. And the new federal statute comes up, and it seems that the problem was resolved. And then the law enforcement monitoring Oftentimes, when the normative act is being published, some person does not establish, and we see how it moves in terms of adoption of this normative act. Sometimes there are cases when the norm starts functioning exactly in the month after adoption. Inevitability of punishment. If I allow, I'll finish in 30 seconds. Two categories, two values that I was able to stop at quite global responsibility and trust. I want to say that value of trust, how does it look? The value of trust specifies as the value that is in the foundation of all triangle and talks about readiness of all participants of the state to deem the property in favor of the state, dear colleagues. On one side, it seems quite abstract and demagogical, the readiness to transfer something. But you have to understand, if such readiness will not be in the society, in the world, we have new kind of societies, and the global societies are not above the state. So the Constitution of Russian Federation allows opportunity to implement, incarnate these values, not first, not second, not the ninth chapter, don't need to be addition, editing, and anything that was necessary for the constitutional court, so we should agree with the term, so we can celebrate the next Jubilee of Constitution. You will have to remember that you, the past can devour our future. Very bright. I always admire when do you have time to learn so with the novelties. You mentioned politological literature. It seems that you read our philosophers because academicians step in, uh, rest in peace, not long before his death for two years was developing the topic of this coexistence of two technological organization. We don't know the name of the book, but please notice, Pligin already said it, the only thing when you talk about the man is not allowed into the system, talking about our proposal to have new law on the normative facts, what is in Kazakhstan, Mr. Sarpekov? Is this the third edition of the... In Bulgaria, it was in the Soviet times, so we cannot adopt. A legal school doesn't allow, or what? Simply does not 
allowed into the system. Exactly what is happening now. I use very soft description, but legal war is still on, and that the laws and the acts are not for people. Mr. Tikamirov said, and I asked him to speak in the Academy of Science, and he said, we have texts, we have stage plays, we have viewers. Why do we need a law on normative facts? I must tell, because the Institute is trying to protect the since 70s. I was a graduate student at that time. Even the Ministry of Justice prepared. There was initiative group. Then uh, Mr. Chernagor came and a uh, full generation of theoreticians. The values are being formed in very complex way. Mikhail Valentinovich properly stated that we need time. It's about differential answer at the level of law enforcement and law realization in relation to the values declared at the level of fundamental law. So we'll not avoid. We still have to walk our way. And this is what history teaches us. Hitler said that this we have only 25 years. What are the lessons of the 12th of December of 1993 and how we should, Mr. Bart promised to tell us. It doesn't work as usual. Well, he is preparing. I'd like to point out when we had the speaker with his presentation, he was talking about social rights, then about the rights we had in the audience, a specialist in the social legislation and social human rights, new financial ombudsman, and also head of the center of the legal research, Mikhail Alexandrovich Fedotov. <coughs> we cannot avoid it. We'll try it. The organizers allowed us to speak for another 10 to 15 minutes. So we're ready. I sacrifice my presentation so that we can have discussion. All right, you're not the brightest, but not the worst. We have only 39th article. Article 39. One, two, three. Nothing. Wait a minute. Any challenge or the challenging people to have a war or the violence or any form of intolerance is forbidden. This is it. Bravo. You see in the form of quite short epigraph, short Croatian Republic Constitution movie. You see it's difficult for the police, policeman to know about constitutional truth and he is trying to learn. He has to pass the exam exam on the Croatian Constitution law test. For people who have to protect, they have difficulty. I recommend this film. For us it's very important to understand what values that our colleagues speak about are establishing for many countries. More and more, more and more countries 
go to the doctrine of patriotism, constitutional patriotism. And here we can talk a lot about interesting points and quotations. I will not read. You'll see them on the screen. But everyone is asking, what makes us single nation? What unites us? So different people, so different ethnic groups, different religions groups. However, we say that we're single people, we're sovereign, and we're so society. Every nation finds foundation and basis for democracy. For France's great French Revolution, for United States Declaration of Independence, for Spain a civil war, for Germany the basis is Osvensim and only Osvensim, no more Osvensims. The only here are some quotations about constitutional patriotism in Germany, but we talk about ourselves. It is important for us to understand what in principle is our foundation for constitutional patriotism. The adherence of the constitutional patriotism exists in different countries. In Spain, Switzerland, and Malaysia, in Canada, in Ukraine, on Ukraine, as they say now, all ask question, what unites these societies? The societies that look for the political solidarity, complexly composed societies, they talk about patriotism as the union of the nation, but this attempts finish with the failures, and failure is not only the disadvantages of the doctrine, but it's also about usage by the societies that are prepared for perception. As the carrying structures. And I would like to talk about, in this context, people as the sovereign should always learn and study study constitutional patriotism. One of the key priorities for constitutional patriotism is ongoing open political communication for all participants of democratic and political process. If only it is all the always how they react to the new challenges, what achievements and values should be under constitutional protection and which should be transformed and edited, we can talk about developed democratic society. Limitation of political communication is dangerous and the political communication should be conducted according to established by the society rules. Sorry, we are in the university, so I should talk about practice-oriented teaching. Teaching when sovereign gains knowledge about his state and the function of the state and he has competences in terms of participation in political process. There are questions that are taken from the sovereignty. The people are limited in its rights. It's a result of historical experience, if you wish, as a result of historical lessons learned by any nation. This clause is in the constitution of Japan, Greece, and other countries. They understand that people are not only sovereign, but they have duty. We, as a nation, have duties. There are, they change not only by desire, but society. You know, the concept of unlimited sovereignty found reflection in the constitution of the Soviet Union and the Russian Socialist Federative Republic, an absence the first assembly of the representatives on the 12th of Ju July of 1990. They spoke about sovereignty of the so Soviet Union. Implications are known well to everyone. In many ways, against constitutional patriotism, many states addressed to what can be called hysterical patriotism, when it's not fairness, equality, are sacrificed to the national interest and ideas of national security. The patriotism becomes, from the understanding by society of the values, some margin and some religious feeling. But constitutional patriotism as the doctrine is our feeling of 
participation of citizens should be formed and educated. This feeling should be learned in school and university. But unfortunately, we learn this feeling not only in schools and universities, we learn in our real life. Uh, within the framework of curriculum, constitutional patriotism lessons will be demanded that we can offer. What shall we learn in modern doctrine? First of all, number of very important mechanisms, and the first of them is readiness to admit failure. The readiness to accept f failure is based on communication. The losing party during election has preemptive right to congratulate the winner. Especially difficult to congratulate a winner when the victory was determined by the specifics of it electoral system, or the minimum ratio between four and contra. We know that five American presidents become, became without having majority of the voters, but they accepted their system, and I like the expression, by Al Gore, America, in America we make country above the parties. When majority wins, a certain following of the majority democracy. The winner gets it all. It is based on trust. The political process is being carried properly. That uh, even the big losing party will not suffer. It's based on the two-party system. Then one party is in prison and another party is in power. Another one is homogeneous people. Society is based on the homogeneous cultural units. But this is wonderful, but you see quotation from Russia of the end of 19th century. This quotation is applicable to modern Russia. We're not homogeneous society. We're not homogeneous society ethnically, religiously, psychologically, culturally. So comes the question. So it's difficult for us to build some common values and accept failure. So, first thing now, readiness to the social learning with understanding that people are sovereign, but this is very high category, political parties, companies, business, we citizens, we have to be ready to learn new technologies, democratic procedures, informational procedures. We have to be ready to uh, accept political communication. For this, something that is not easy for us, we have to be in peace. Some nations received lessons with not so much blood. In America, South and North War, number of the revolutions in France that uh, the decapitated number of the political figures. Other nations had to pay price through humiliation, like it happened in Germany, or through the national and state destruction. How it happened in our country? Because we we'll have to answer this question, that the most tragic foundation of democracy is in our country. We paid our political arrangement and political system through the destruction of our state in 1991. And of course, it's very difficult for us to be in peace with this story. What shall we do? We have to be reconciled. Awful words of the hymn from France. The word blood is mentioned seven times. They organically combined the constitutional values as the subject of national pride. Really, we have very difficult foundation for constitutional patriotism. We paid it by the crash of our state. According to the words of our president, it's the largest catastrophe in history. You know that our Western colleagues oftentimes cannot understand our feelings and our sentiments, such as we want the communism, we defeated Pat if United States de decomposed into 50 states, 
we would say that they defeated imperialism, and also I would say that this is historical process. But we experienced destruction of our state that by many Western experts was characterized as the end of history. Luckily for our country, we were able to survive after the end of this history. We are on the path of looking for our national identity. Very important, the idea of unity, political communication, transparency, because we together paid very high price. We experienced destruction of the state, we experienced threat of civil war, and we'll be sincere. Let's pay the tribute to our constitution because this bulletin prevented many dangerous events. I especially took off my glasses, so I noticed that they make sign that I need to finish. This constitution of 90. Three. Thank you. We communicated. If we quote Fukuyama, you should point it at the date because there are so many ideas. Remember that market will come to our post Soviet space. We will not need anything, we will not need sociology, not philosophy. Everything will be decided by the market. And also, colleagues, I'd like to remind you. Always when I listen to Igor Naspievich, the legal science is being criticized for isolationism. And this is so easy to combine politology and social science and legal science. I don't quite agree, but this topic of uh, imparting patriotism, legal patriotism, is relevant to our countries because values much exchanged and the old was not replaced by the new one. Many speakers mentioned it. It's clear that time, at what stage we should educate these people, we should do it at school. It is clear. When somebody is 60, like this policeman in the video, we have a proposal, we should not uh, test constitution or theory, but public officials should be tested. It seems to me that this bread presentation is very important. You noticed another topic. It's purely legal term. The doctrine is important that we have constitutionalization of national legal system, of norms, of the legal norms offered by the national bodies, such as Venetian one, European Court of Human Rights, imported concepts of national constitution. Standardization of constitution grows, they become the same. Look at the Islamic State, text of constitution of Europe, just like Iran constitution. There was a book translated in Farsi. It's sec second copy of Article 2, and there is additional commentary. Upper values is the human rights, and then of the Almighty. Why I'm saying this? Because the topic of uh, educating about patriotism, because of the growth of the standardization and the constitutionalization, sorry for using this term again from Grigory Alexeyevich quotation about national legal system, national norms. Just like I said, the concept created on the basis of Western, uh, maybe American ones, in our constitution does not have roots in legal turf or cultural turf, how it can be educated. It takes time and we need to adopt to our legal consciousness. That's uh, and what Igor Nazivich offered. I believe that it should be done early in any case. We should not violate system connections because dysfunction can come. We should divide examples of the rightful behavior. This gap must not be there colleagues, 
time is out, but we have a very interesting presentation. I'd like to say that today we are in favor of stability of the Russian Constitution, and it demonstrated stability for 25 years. But look at what's happening with the post-Soviet space, and not only. As we said earlier, uh, constitutions didn't change the old constitution of post-Soviet space because of the similar facts were subjected to all kinds of the modifications, such as Azerbaijan, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Ukraine, Tajikistan, Turkmenia, Uzbekistan. They have interesting experience. I think that the experience of the constitutional reform in Kazakhstan is very positive, despite of the fact that uh, we have interesting novel that uh, have oriental nature related to the oriental person conduct. They quite be in peace with the European ones. And I was the key reporter about the, the constitution of Kazakhstan. The Venetian Commission assessed as the translational movement. It's quite interesting. And our colleague Ramazan Omarbekovich Sarpekov will tell us from the Institute of Legislation from the Republic of Kazakhstan. By the way, we have big experience in our colleagues and the assemblymen from Medjlis and work in constitutional court. So this is the view from other sides of barricades. This is the question about theater and the viewers. Thank you very much. My frequent visits to Russia, where I exchange about the change in the constitutional system, it was quite there's quite an interest in Kazakhstan. My colleagues in Constitutional Council and the ministers know about this, and I've showed the topic, and with pleasure, as I passed the salutation from Kazakhstan. It's not easy, it can be explained that um, due to links between Russia and Kazakhstan, desire to improve our collaboration can improve the spiritual and cultural links and links in science. Kazakhstan respects all achievements of the Russian Federation. That's why with pleasure we accepted offer in December and this time I prepared a big presentation. I will not read this presentation. We'll pass the materials to you. I'd like to make review of the history of development of the Constitution of Kazakhstan. As you know, we live and work based on Constitution adopted in August of 1995. In 1993, we had first Constitution. The Constitution at the 13th Assembly of Kazakh Soviet Republic. Constitution exists for two years, and there were many problems. If uh, you're interested, we had 360 assemblymen. They worked in sessions. They bothered the president every day, several times. There were visits of the Supreme Council and commissions, subcommissions, committees, but permanent commissions. They reviewed. I was chairman of the provincial court. And I was surprised by the ad adopted law. So this situation led us that referendum of the Kazakh Republic in 1995. It adopted new constitution. What were the prerequisites in order to adopt? What do, did we come to? I'll briefly tell you. Just like any other states, Kazakhstan works through the changes, radical changes, pointed at modernization. We were criticized in terms of election, in terms of perfection of the legislation. We take experience of the advanced countries, especially European ones, but we ac accepted. So we came to this constitution. And the second reason 
it was time of unprecedented rise of the economy of the country. It was time people were not paid salaries. And the third basis to accept new constitution in 1995 was confirmation of Republic of Kazakhstan as the authoritative republic adherent of peace and friendship. It is quite known fact it was necessary to do it. In the fundamental law we should point out this foundation. And the fourth, it was time of breakthrough of our country to full-size democracy and access to new political level. This is when the statement of the president who said that our principle is first economics and then politics. And the statement of the president is relevant today. We are oriented at this. There is money, there is, if there is good economics, other questions can be resolved. I am the witness of this. I was assemblyman of three sessions. I was permanent representative of Parliament and Constitutional Council. I participated in 20 Constitutional Council meetings. We that's why the potential of the Constitution in Kazakhstan is very close and clear for me, discussing just one topic, such as the detention of physical person we discussed for several days from the moment. And such questions were many. If the Constitutional Court conducted 60 meetings in 20 of those I participated. This topic is very close to me, and with pleasure I came here. What do we come to? We came to due to Constitution. First, creation of professional parliament with two houses. At that time, we had 354 assemblymen in the lower chamber, it's Majlis, and we have Senate. We, and we have sixth year. Majlis, Senate is made of 107 assemblymen based on the co secret voting equal rights based election. And there are ethnic groups of Kazakhs. Senate, uh, sorry, Senate is 47 assemblymen, two people from every province and the cities of Republican level. We have Almata, Astana, and from the last year, Chimkent, with population of million people, came to the Republican meaning, meaning, meaning city. The time of function, seven years. President is elected now for five years. Assemblyman in uh, Senate is six years, and uh, Majlis, five years. One of serious foundation that we achieved is about electoral legislation. In 2004, in November, I participated in the observation committee with the OCSE during the election of George W. Bush. I thought then that really anything st stated. America is really a democratic country, yes. And we were criticized quite strongly. And this dual standard caused on a and we conduct elections and we work normally. Another serious question after constitutional reform is appointment of the president of the provinces such as like gov governors after receiving approval of the assemblies 
in every process. In every province, and we consider the revocation procedure. If uh, people don't trust particular assemblymen, this question can be resolved. One of serious questions since I worked a long time as a judge, perfection of the judicial system. And then we said, why, for instance, five, six step judicial system? And we have to study how much time it takes for a physical person to go through the legal system uh, hurdles. And the Supreme Court has its own destination and the provincial courts have their own responsibility. The rulings of the provincial courts remain in power, and as for details, your colleagues know perfectly, and the, in terms of prosecutor's office, police, local representatives, all of this takes place, and based on constitution, we perfect always our national legislation. And most important, what I wanted to tell you now, Kazakhstan was able, as a result of constitutional reform, to provide perfect climate for development of domestic business and raising of investments. We oriented all our diplomatic services we're not state like Russia. We need investments in, and uh, based on the Constitution. We reviewed our national legislation. At first I said potential. I think everyone has great potential. When I was preparing to come here, I looked all available information on the Internet. Since 1993, adoption of Constitution in Russia, <laughs> till the latest <coughs> presentation of the chairman of the Constitutional Court of Russia, Zorkin. So I agree. The state, if really works, expresses the will of people. It's necessary the correction measures are taken. And blind reform should not be done. What we heard here, I think, periodically, constitutional reform of Kazakhstan is uh, time of time span is nine to ten years. There were different proposals, and some politicians said, "Let's make it faster." As Tatiana said, Venetian committee they looked at our proposals, and they gave conclusion, and there were positive ones, so we delayed for later time, and these norms will be adopted. Such nature, quiet usefulness of this form, thank you for your invitation, and I'll make my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, although you negatively expressed opinion about the model, but American research said that true laboratory of the constitutional system is both Soviet space. This presentation is the confirmation colleagues were out of timeline, although we wanted to have discussion and some people sign up for discussion and Mikhail Alexandrovich is looking at me. What shall we do? Only five minutes. Just one statement, minute and a half, and then we finish. I'd like to say that I like all presentations made here, and I'd like to make continuation of the thought expressed by Sergei Shakrai. This is the question about alternativity or non-alternativity. So the question is, was there alternative? In my view, there was no alternative. And that was stated in the document. That was forgotten. 
I mean the address of the President of Russian Federation about the constitutionalities and no consulta consult garant database we will not find this document that has historical meaning. I'll quote a few words from this document. Constitutional state of a country is quite wobbly. We should not close our eyes behind the constitution word we have quite rough content and oftentimes is being interpreted but what is the procedural importance what is the fair boundaries such questions no supreme council no constitutional court is not discuss discussing as for the legal fairness of which vladimir nikolaevich spoke what is the constitutionality of the Constitution? What kind of questions was asked by the President? Speaking to Supreme Council, the only way to change is to accept new Constitution. Unfortunately, he was not heard. No Supreme Council, no the Assembly, no Constitution Court. So there was very tough crisis that finished by adoption of constitution that we use now. I think that this is a very important point and the question in the theme of our round table, there is no alternative. When they talk about need to change constitution, not to change constitution, I have clear answer, quite clear answer. First, let's learn to live by the Constitution that we have. We today, this textbook did not resolve. We don't have any basis to toss this textbook because we didn't ma handle it. We had to solve all the problems and then take another textbook. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail Alexandrovich. You drew a bottom line to discussion. I think that all participants of the meeting will agree so we can finish. I would add that we don't challenge, we don't have any f basis to review constitution, even local changes, because local changes can create negative implications. And f forecast, you're right, first we need to learn what we have and then we can think about changes. I'd like to remind you why Sergei Mikhailovich had so many patches in the Constitution. Something was changed properly. What is it? For the reason that at the time doctrine was not ready. That's why we need to conduct discussion like this so we can be ready when time comes to offer a legal example worth of constitutional level. Thank you for all participants.